Dudes, this whole concept art game is changing. Concept art is constantly evolving, especially in the video game industry. Every year, the requirements and expectations of concept art in the video game industry completely change. And there are new tools constantly involved. There are, think about this, thousands of new people coming out of college or entering the workforce, they're competing for the same jobs as you. They're competing for the same audience as you. So you need to put together a art career strategy. Basically, you need to plan out what are you gonna do this year to set yourself apart? What are you gonna do this year to accomplish your art goals, your art dreams? I, I may not have answers for you, but maybe I can get you thinking of ways that you hadn't thought of before that can help you with your strategy to achieve exactly what it is you want to accomplish with your art this year, whether it's getting a job at a studio or whether it's building your own audience. Two very different things, by the way. We're gonna talk a little bit more about that. Let's go. Before we dig into it, man, you gotta do one thing for yourself. You gotta subscribe. And the second thing I'm gonna suggest, in the comments below, you gotta write down what is your goal. Putting it to words gives it power. It's on your mind, you're dreaming about it, you're thinking about it, you're gonna be strategizing. If you're just flowing with wherever the river takes you, you're gonna end up somewhere a million miles from where you wanted to go. So write it in the comments below. All right, let's dig into your strategies for 2024. Oh man, 2024, we're bringing in the heat, blowing it up over here. All right, all right. So first and foremost, let's say that you're just trying to get a job. You want that illusion of security, stability. You want to have a boss that tells you what to do. And especially if you don't want to be an online personality. You want a job. You need a job. You start looking around for job listings, but hey, how do you even find job listings? I just recently made a video about how to job hunt. You can check out job listings for video game studios or... Even shoe companies will post listings for artists when they need them over on websites like indeed.com. No, they do not sponsor me, but I used to use this website all the time when I was job hunting. You can put in like a search for like what city you live in and what kind of job you wanna do and you'll find sometimes contract jobs there and sometimes you'll find more long-term jobs there. So, so indeed.com is a great resource. Uh, another one that I used to use is LinkedIn. LinkedIn is sort of like a resume website, so you can put up your resume there. You can also find people who might be art outsource managers at studios that you would like to work for. And if your LinkedIn profile is set up with a nice link to your portfolio, then you're gonna you know, stand out as looking like somebody who has experience doing this. Now, if you just don't have any game industry experience or any experience in the industry that you wanna work in, I recommend doing some indie projects with some other people, collaborate, get some titles under your belt. You know, when I was trying to break into the video game industry, I decided to start making comic books and, and that didn't really help me a lot. Like I was obsessed with trying to get into Blizzard back in 1996 after playing Warcraft 2. It was like the first PC game that I ever bought. And I was like, oh, I love the art in this. I really want to work on, you know, games like this, really stylized. And so I used to apply and they would just reject it. All I, all I had done was famous comic books at that time. And uh, I was only 18, 19 years old. I didn't have any industry experience. So what did I do? I went off and I've tried to find opportunities working at small indie video game studios. Yes, that existed back in 1999. I did other things in between, but my point that I want to get to is, you know, don't set your sights on just the big guys, you know? Aim for maybe some small fries that they don't require as many years of experience. And the irony is, uh, I got rejected by Blizzard four times until I went to go work for another small studio. I worked on a Game Boy Advance game and then that got me an opportunity at a slightly bigger studio called Capcom. Maybe you've heard of them. And uh, I worked at Capcom in the United States for about three years and I did not even have a, the game we worked on was not a huge success, but after shipping a game, Blizzard suddenly paid attention to my portfolio, partly because now I had some experience, but the experience wasn't like a checkbox in, in my uh, resume. It was more that my portfolio now reflected that I knew what concept art for games was. And what that means is, that you have to have breakdowns of cutouts of specific parts so that the 3D modeler can build off of it. There's cohesive storytelling involved, that you're thinking about gameplay when you're doing these paintings and these sketches. 
and that it's not just about painting pretty pictures. And when you can really start to learn what your craft is and show that in your portfolio, you're going to have a much better chance. And some things have changed this year. I mean, you know, there are a lot of people that are using photo bashing. There are some people that are using some AI and whether you feel, however you feel about that or not, like you need to find what the studios that you would like to work for are using. What tools are they using? What is their policy on these things, you know? And try to apply that to the portfolio that you've got and be transparent. Do not do anything deceptive. I've, I've literally gotten portfolios from people that had my own artwork traced in their portfolio. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not gonna hire you for tracing my artwork. I can draw my own stuff. That's not why I would hire somebody, you know? So uh, be mindful of that and, and try to capture the art style of the studio you, were, you want to work for. And also show that you can be creative within those confines and that you understand how to create concept art for a 3D modeler. Another way that you can get experience doing this is to go to online forums or try to partner up with a 3D modeler and try to create some concepts for them and work on a portfolio together. I mean, really, there's no better way for you to develop your skills than just doing. In fact, I don't recommend that you go to any art schools. I don't recommend that you waste any money paying for 50, 60, 70, or $80,000 a year art school degrees. These big studios don't really care about that. You can literally get the same education you get from that from you know, my workshops or even paying a little bit for uh, mentorship or feedback from pros, you'll save a ton of money. Uh, unless of course you just need somebody to crack the whip on you and make sure that you're working. You know, the hardest part that most people fail at is the hard work. There's really sitting down, buckling down and constantly being obsessed with developing and growing. And that doesn't even require eight hours a day or 10 hours a day. It really just requires that you're consistent, that you keep coming back to it. You keep, you continue to learn new things and you continue to, uh, decipher through the mess of misinformation and confusion on the internet and find what's really applicable to what these studios need for them to satisfy their customers. If you can make a business person money, you will never run out of work. So find out what business people need to make their customers happy and they will keep hiring you, okay? In fact, at some point you can become indispensable and then you can get, start getting paid even more money. So, okay. so uh, the best thing that you could be doing if you're not employed and you're looking to get employment is researching uh, what those jobs are. So they'll also tell you what they, what they are, are hiring for. If you find on their website, you find the job listing, it'll tell you, oh, well, here are the requirements and start going through those requirements and making a list of how you can get those requirements under your belt. If you need to take anatomy classes or you need to take a, a course from, you know, a YouTube instructor or a online uh, art teacher, you know, somebody like myself, if you need to work on anatomy, for example, I have like some workshops on that. And I know there are a lot of other artists on YouTube and online that you might find. Check out Reddit. I, I never recommend anybody go to Reddit. <laughs> I kind of, I take that back. I take it back. But uh, wherever you can find information, maybe in uh, art discord uh, groups, I also have an art discord group where you can go and ask questions. And a lot of the people that are in my art discord are also very career focused. And also a lot of people that are working towards getting work in the video game industry, or at least appreciating that, understanding it and growing their skill with understanding how concept art is developed for video games. And you'll have a lot of very helpful people in there that will uh, give you some pointers and directions. And it's just a really, really great community because you can ask for feedback or you can just kind of post and, and you know, you don't have to worry about a lot of um, drama or anything like that. It's really, it's, it's kind of a unique and, and cool uh, Discord if you ask me. The other thing that I would recommend is maybe joining the challenges that I have every month over there where I will post a new challenge such as like creating a new Jedi, you know, or something like that, or a new uh, starship from a specific franchise. And these kind of things can really t uh, challenge you to communicate with other artists about facing the same challenge and wrangle your head around like, well, how do I think in terms of the construction of this universe that I'm supposed to be creating in, you know? And then the end result can be something that goes in your portfolio. So these are the kind of things that you could be working on every day. And, and I recommend if you're looking for work and you have not landed work, and specifically in any industry, any art industry, uh, then maybe what you need to be doing is treating your portfolio like that is your job. And what I mean by that is like, uh, if you can, you know, wake up in the morning and start working on your portfolio piece. So for example, 
working in video games, you'll usually have about like two or three days to design an armor set for Diablo 3. That's what I had, okay? So now that you know that, you could, you could give yourself two or three days to design an armor set for Diablo 3. That could be a great page to add in your portfolio. And keep going through your portfolio, and if something looks like the weakest link, a page in your portfolio that you don't like or it's not good enough yet, redo that. That's right, set aside three days to do a whole new page, okay? And if you don't like anything I just said, then maybe concept art isn't for you. If you don't like reworking your designs, concept art for video games, not for you. If you don't like aggressive deadlines, like you get two days to do something, then concept art for video games is not for you. Don't bother trying to apply. And uh, also, I would say this year, specifically one of the big challenges that studios have is they wanna know if an artist that they're hiring actually drew it, if you're an artist and you do draw everything by hand, you're gonna to have to include some of that in your portfolio to show that you crafted this. You, here's where you sketched out the idea. And here's the next image where that idea, you know, didn't work so you refined it. And here's the third sketch where it shows, here's how I refined it further and then I tied in these colors and you write little notes in your concepts to say, this is the story, this is a design that was created with intention because it met game design or it met story of what this character is saying to the player. Great concept art is about solving problems, about solving game design problems in a visual language. How do you present your work to that employer? Think about it from their perspective. What are they hiring for, okay? They tell you in those job listings. So if you're looking for employment, it, I don't wanna say it's as simple as that, but it's pretty straightforward, okay? Um, work on that portfolio every day. Know how long it should take you to do each piece. Challenge yourself all the time. Constantly go through your portfolio and ask yourself, do these pages in my portfolio do they really represent what I want to be doing and what I'm good at? And is this a real representation of like what that studio currently has? You know, do they have artists of that caliber? And if you're like applying to a studio where you're going to be the hottest artist there, you have a way better chance of rolling right in and getting promoted and having job stability. Believe me, man, a lot of these smaller studios have a real hard time trying to find talent and keeping that talent. So, I mean, obviously, I don't need to tell you that, you know, pretty much if you have all of the talent, if you are holding all the cards, you know, then you don't have to worry about anything. They'll come after you, man. If you're the, uh, the fattest dog in the packet, the juiciest burger on the grill, the spiciest mustard in the souffle. So find a way to find out if your portfolio is looking good and how to improve it. You could also go to GDC and actually wait in line and get your portfolio reviewed by pros. That's helpful too. Try to find other pros and maybe get feedback from them if they are open to it and, and make sure that it's in a setting where they're already said they're open to it. Hey, looking at portfolios or hey, send your artwork my way, I'll give you critique. But don't get like a critique from an animator about your concept art portfolio for video games. Not the same thing. And the same is true with uh, different studios. So like if you're applying at EA, for instance, they have very different standards. Hell, uh, you know, even between Riot and Blizzard, Okay, so uh, to give you a good example, I designed a bunch of crests, all the faction crests for League of Legends, and we would spend three months on each crest. When I designed all of the uh, crests for the Warlords of Draenor for Blizzard about, you know, uh, about the same time, uh, we spent, uh, we did eight crests in two weeks totally different process. So, you know, one size does not fit all. If you talk to, you know, one art director at one studio and they give you feedback on one thing, you know, it may not be applicable to a different studio. So make sure that the people that you're talking to, that you're collecting feedback from, that they are consistent with the studio or the type of studio that you're applying to. Okay, okay. Let's talk about building an audience, okay? So let's say you're like, nah, I don't wanna work for anybody, man. I wanna, I wanna be Instagram famous. I wanna start getting like, free Wacom tablets sent to me or XP pen or whoever, because I want to be a quote influencer. Okay. Well, if that's the case, then the best thing that you could be doing is consistently posting. Now um, on YouTube, I was able to build my channel really fast. And the way that I built my channel really fast was that I was posting three videos a week. That's an awful lot. And I didn't want to do controversial stuff like, uh, you know, talk about controversial topics or get involved in a lot of drama. So uh, if you're not going to do that, you need to be retweetable or repostable Somehow, you've got to stir up something, you know. Uh, the way to get your channel blowing up is to get people talking about it on Reddit and talking about it on their social media. But for the most part, the things that blew up my channel were getting a sponsorship from Wacom, getting a sponsorship from Sketchbook Pro, uh, where my work was being posted and retweeted by them every month. 
And so that helped me to reach a larger audience. How do you get there? Well, you know, you certainly, if you're super controversial, you're probably not gonna do that. So what I tried to do was just bring the most value to people on YouTube. So if you're not gonna go the controversial route, you have to go the exceptional route. So set really aggressive goals for yourselves, like, you know, posting really frequently, really high quality stuff, maybe even stockpile a lot of it. So you can just make it look like you're just posting like tons of videos that are really high quality every day of the week. Now your strategy for 2024 and meeting your art goals might be totally different. You know, your goals might not even involve getting into a game studio. Maybe you just want to improve at a certain aspect of your skill. Oftentimes when we look at our goals, they seem so lofty. It's like looking at a, a massive, you know, 20 story ladder. And it's like, you look up at this thing and you're like, no way could I climb that thing. But if you break it apart into small steps and you look at each little ladder rung and each little part seems more and more achievable. In fact, they say that when you're climbing a really tall ladder, just look at the one right in front of you. If you start thinking about the whole thing, it's overwhelming to your brain. It can also make you shut down and then you can even lose momentum. And that's counterproductive. But you know, the irony is, is once you get up like halfway or once you achieve some of those goals, you know, other people start looking at you and going, well, how did you do that? And you're like, I don't know, man, just like one foot in front of the other. And uh, this is learning to learn. You know, and that's what I'm trying to teach you here on my YouTube channel. And I hope that it really helps you. Now for me, obviously I want to grow my YouTube channel. So strat number one, start customizing crap and giving it to Mr. Beast as a surprise. This seems to work for every YouTuber out there that has an art channel, man. They suddenly go from down here to way up here. I just got to surprise Mr. Beast with some customized crap. Works every time. Strat number two for growing my YouTube channel. I'm going to paint only with one color using my left hand. Huh? 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 Not doing anything for you? What? What do I got to do? I actually teach you how to draw? What? Okay, that's what I'm going to stick to then. Here on my YouTube channel, I do everything I can to try to help you accomplish your art goals, okay? I've been making videos for over a decade and I get a lot of people asking me, well, hey, can you teach me a little bit more specifically? Like, how do I get my own comic book printed? You know what? I created a workshop for that. If you've ever wanted to be a comic book artist or writer, uh, this workshop is designed for you. I've done comics for over 30 years. In this workshop, you're gonna learn how to conceive an idea for a comic book, how to storyboard it out, how to organize panels, how to set your set up your timing, and then also how to get the book printed so you can actually get a physical copy of this thing, go to comic book shows and sell them or give them to your friends. If your career ambitions are more in line with working in uh, video games as a concept artist, I have two environment concept art workshops and a couple of character design workshops. And these are not just time-lapse videos, okay? They are what you would actually expect on the job. This is something that most people don't spend the time to actually learn. They think, oh, well, this other artist does pretty pictures on Instagram. Maybe that's what concept art for games are, is. No, it's not. When you're on the job, there's certain requirements and things that you've got to have in your portfolio. This is exactly what I was talking about earlier in this video. Yeah, sure, you could spend $80,000 a year on some art school, uh, to give you a piece of paper that says you know what you're doing or you could just get these for super cheap. I've helped hundreds of artists get their dream jobs at video game studios. Some of them are art directors now. What better time than at the beginning of the year to really tackle your art career goals? These workshops are designed to help you. So check the link in the description below. And if you're interested in just supporting the channel, you can always become a member as well where I do a very personalized vlog probably a couple of times a month, okay? And I look forward to hearing what your art goals are. And if you've also, if you participated in this in years past, please give me an update in the comments below if you were able to accomplish or at least get closer to your art goals. I'd love to hear about that as well. And I will see you guys in the next video. All right, ciao.